Yo, what's up Xbox and PC fans? It's Josh, bringing you guys just a little bit of a devil's advocate situation here today. Uh, you know, a lot of talk going around about the GTX 1080, GTX 1070, uh, GTX 1060 kind of hanging out, waiting in the wings. Um, you know, and just whether or not the value uh, kind of play for the consumer is going to be with NVIDIA or with AMD. You know, AMD obviously coming out with their new GPUs here very soon in the RX 480, 470, and 460 with pricing much, much more aggressive. Obviously, they are lower-end cards than the GTX 1070 and 1080, but, um, you know, the GTX 1070 is 379 for the regular edition, 449 for the Founders Edition, and you know, add-in board cards uh, are higher than that, and, and just because of the market, they're going for you know like seven, eight hundred dollars online, which is not Nvidia's fault. That's just the way it is right now because of supply and demand. Uh, GTX 1080s, you know, uh, 600 bucks for a regular edition, 700 dollars for a Founders Edition, and they're going for upwards of a thousand dollars right now online because again, supply is relatively low compared to demand, at least. So, um, you know, these RX 480s are coming out, and people are looking at these cards thinking they, they could possibly get some more performance, uh, you know, bang for the buck, especially because they are supposed to be available. Rumor has it that these cards are going to be 20 times or more the number of cards available at launch compared to the GTX 1080, which apparently has been in pretty good production but has just been selling out all over the place. It's a worldwide launch, and the card's very high demand, obviously, for that top-end card. A lot of enthusiasts going out and grabbing two, three, or four of those, hopefully not more than two because they don't support it. But those cards are in high demand, uh, as are the 1070s, so prices are very high on those right now, and they are very hard to come by if you can find them. But uh, apparently, the RX 480s, 470s and 460s will be available in massive, massive quantities here on just a few days on June 29th when they launch. So um, I just wanted to pose this question to you guys and see what kind of performance could we get for the money theoretically. Now obviously this is very, very early. We don't have a lot of numbers to go on here in terms of benchmarks, etc. And this is all complete theory and speculation on my part. But I did a little bit of math here. I want you guys to follow me. If I mess this up, let me know below, and I'll, you know, I'll try and fix my retardation. But uh, here's what I got. So if we take the RX 480, and we go with the 8 gigabyte uh, cards, we have at least equivalent VRAM size there between the two. Uh, you know, that card is 229 bucks. Comes with 2,304 shaders, graphics cores, etc., whatever you want to call them. And it has a base clock speed of... 1266 megahertz so this is not taking into account or consideration any temporary boost to clock speed etc this is going to be just for simplicity's sake based on the core clocks that we have to work with so again it's 2304 shaders uh, at a clock speed a base clock speed of 1266 now if you do the math on this and you multiply those two numbers it gives you 2.91 teraflops of compute power. However, both of these cards can do two operations per cycle, uh, per clock essentially. So that's times two. That gives us a grand total for the stock RX 480 of 5.83 teraflops of computing performance. Now, rumor has it that card will use about 100 watts of power at load. And that's, that's pretty daggone good for 5.83 teraflops. That's a really good number. Um, now, NVIDIA's GTX 1080, obviously a higher-end card, 699 for the Founders Edition, 599 for the Regular Edition. So I'm going to go ahead and give them the benefit of the doubt here. We're going to give them the Regular Edition pricing, uh, and I'm going to use some Founders Edition benchmarks. It's still uh, $600 for that card. You've got 2,560 shaders or graphics cores in that GPU at a standard base frequency on either the Founders or the regular edition for 1,607 megahertz, giving us a total of 4.113 teraflops. And we multiply that by two again because it's two per clock. It gives us a grand total of a stock uh, GTX 1080, 8.227 teraflops. And they're using, I'm seeing around the web here, and I will link all these articles below. You guys can follow along. Tell me if I'm wrong, that'd be awesome. But uh, yeah, I'm seeing a typical power usage here under a load of about 184 watts 
at the stock frequency for the GTX 1080. So 184 watts, 8.22 teraflops. Again, very, very solid performance. And relative to the, uh, you know, the wattage there, you're getting some great performance. That's, that's awesome. But what if we wanted to get the maximum theoretical performance? You know, if you want to go out and spend $2,000 on graphics cards, what can you get in games? I'm not talking about benchmarks. I'm not playing 3D Mark. I'm not playing Unigen Heaven. I'm not playing some stress test. I'm talking about playing games. I'm talking about playing Doom, The Witcher, whatever I feel like on max settings on three 4K monitors or something crazy like that. So what can we get for our money with both of these platforms in theory? Well, we know the GTX 1080 will only support two cards in SLI per NVIDIA recently announcing that. They do have a high bandwidth bridge available, which does help. I look over on Unbox Hardware, the guy has a review up of the uh, high bandwidth bridge versus the regular uh, you know, just the freebie NVIDIA bridge that you can use. And it's worth the 40 bucks. If you're going to put two of those cars together and you're already spending $1,200, $1,400, $2,000 for two GPUs, $40 for another little piece of tech to go in between those two cards to give you the full bandwidth between the two cards and make your scaling as best as possible, I'd say it's worth it. But if you get two of those cards, you're going to spend $1,200 at a minimum. And let's be realistic, it's probably going to cost you closer to two Gs at this point in time. Uh, plus that bridge... So you're still looking at well over a thousand dollars possibly two you know or north of that depending on where you get these cards from but but retail 1200 bucks plus 40 bucks that's 1240. Uh, now you're going to have 2560 shaders times 1607 it works out to be at 8.2 teraflops and that works out to 16.4 teraflops if you have two of those cards so that's pretty good nothing to snide at there and the amd side it's not confirmed yet whether we can actually use two-way, three-way, or four-way crossfire, but assuming they do actually enable four-way crossfire, four of those 8 gigabyte cards, 229 a pop, you're looking at 916 bucks. There is no bridges required. Uh, AMD does all of their crossfire through the PCIe bus, so there's no uh, bridges required to buy. So four of those cards, $916, and they should be readily available, allegedly, at launch, which we will see. But again, you know, you're know, you looking at those 2304 shaders. Uh, standard clock speed gives you 5.83 teraflops per card, and 5.83 teraflops times four gives you 23.32 teraflops of computing power. Now scaling, again, obviously is going to be, you know, kind of diminishing return, but that's yet to be determined. But in terms of sheer computing power, 23.32 teraflops versus 16.4 teraflops. And you're looking at, again, 1240 bucks for the GTX 1080s, if you can get them uh, for retail, which is highly unlikely, versus the $916 for four of those RX 480s. Looking at power consumption, the RX 480s, rumored to use about 100 watts, Standard clock speeds at load, about a 400 watt power consumption there versus the NVIDIA GTX 1080s 184 watts times two, giving us 368 watts uh, for two of those cards at load in SLI. Now, this is uh, all fine and dandy, these standard clock speeds here, but I know you guys don't want to hear about that crap. No one here is running standard clock speeds. If you're on this channel, probably you're cranking up your stuff just like I am, which is awesome. But let's look at these cards now and see what we can get out of these things in terms of overclocking performance um, using their maximum, you know, kind of usable configurations for games, theoretically. So the AMD RX 480, again, not confirmed, but if we can get four of these babies running in Crossfire, for 916 bucks and overclock them. I have seen overclocks on these cards as high as 1607 megahertz. And I'll link all that stuff below again. If I read it wrong, just let me know. But uh, let's say we take 2304 shaders per card times 1607. That gives us 3.702 teraflops um, times two because there's two, you know, two per cycle of instructions. And that gives us 7.405 teraflops per card. That is awesome for 229. Um, now, times four, that number jumps up to 29.62 teraflops. 
which for $916, you're getting essentially 30 teraflops of computing power. Again, based on you know how those will scale, yet to be seen, but um, assuming they use about 25% more power while overclocked, that's 125 watts per card times four gives us 500 watts of total power draw with 30 teraflops of computing performance. So that is a whale of a deal. What about NVIDIA? Well, the GTX 1080, again, looking at 599 times two, at 1200 bucks, $40 for the little bridge, 1240. And we've got 2,560 shaders. And I've seen clocks around the web that get the base frequency, not the boost frequency. We're doing all base frequencies here. Um, and these cards may go up or down, you know, depending on thermal limits and available power, etc. outside of these numbers. But for these cards, and again, these are reference numbers, you can see that if we get that number up to 1928 for the base frequency, which is pretty daggone high, um, I've seen a lot lower than that for people getting, getting throttling on their cards without having the fan at 100%. But let's say you have that fan cranked up, you got your boost clock as high as it'll go and your base clock as high as it'll go. You get your 2560 shaders, multiply them by 1928, that gives you 4.935 teraflops times two. That gives us 9.871 teraflops per card, which is awesome. That's top of the line right now. And it also gives us 19.742 teraflops for two of those cards in their maximum SLI configuration for games. I don't care about benchmarks again, but the typical power draw I'm seeing around the web, again, is about 206 watts per card under load um, for the GTX 1080s which gives us a grand total of 412 watts power consumption for about 20 teraflops of computing performance. So, you know, I just kind of wanted to query the audience here and see what you guys thought. Obviously, I've been seeing that you know, my comment section has been getting, you know, more and more full with people that are really, really knowledgeable and that have some really good points on both sides of the fence. I see NVIDIA fans that are saying, obviously, Pascal is going to be the better performance per watt. It's going to give you more bang for the buck and just be a better performer all around. So yeah, fellas, if it were up to you, what would you do? Theoretically, $916 gets you four RX 480s with eight gigabytes of VRAM each. That's a total of 32 gigabytes of VRAM in your system with 30 teraflops almost of computing power, drawing only 500 watts of power at load. That's insane. Now the GTX 1080s SLI is also a very viable consideration for 1240 bucks retail for two regular cards uh, with the high bandwidth bridge. You know, I don't know if that's actually available or not. That may cost you closer to two grand by the end of the day in reality. But let's say you spend that two grand, you love NVIDIA, and you know, you've got those uh, two GTX 1080s in SLI. Again, numbers for those cards are already available over at Hardware Unboxed. The guy has reviews up with the high bandwidth bridge and overclocking. Uh, but you're going to get about almost 20 teraflops of computing performance on two GPUs with pretty good scaling using only 412 watts of power. So also a very viable consideration. But I just want to know what you guys think about this. If it were up to you, if money were no object and you could spend the two grand, you know, right now and get those two GTX 1080s uh, with the SLI bridge and have 20 teraflops performance with pretty good scaling or as yet to be determined, yet to be seen, but just taking a stab at it, um, you know, would you guys go ahead and pony up the 916 bucks for four RX 480s and get the 30 teraflops of computing performance at 500 watts? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. But, uh, you know, you guys let me know. There is some leaked gameplay out here uh, of the RX 480s. So a couple of these big reviewers are getting their cards in already, so reviews should be up very, very soon. But in the meantime, uh, give me your opinions on this. You know, 916 bucks, 30 teraflops. <laughs> More like two grand for 20 teraflops in reality. Um, but again, even for retail, you're looking at 1240 at a minimum. If it were up to me, I just honestly, I hate doing uh, SLI or Crossfire. Either of them normally because they're very software dependent, both on uh, the manufacturer of the GPU on their driver end and also on the game developers and in terms of supporting those features, SLI or Crossfire, uh, they both kind of have to work together to do that. And oftentimes they do not. So for me, um, you know, when both these cards are overclocked and I'm looking at either 9.87 teraflops for one GTX 1080 
or 7.4 teraflops for one RX 480. Um, I mean, that's still a hell of a lot of teraflops. My 980 Ti right now at 1500 megahertz gets me about 8.5 teraflops. So right in between these two cards. Um, and I'm very, very happy with that. But if I had to go down just a smidgen on games that didn't support 4X Crossfire for those RX 480s, I could certainly deal with a concession of one teraflop roughly in performance. Um, now, although I'd love to have an additional teraflop for single GPU computing performance, um, to spend that much money on those GTX 1080s for me to get 20 teraflops of computing performance versus a possible 30 for the AMD side of things, I, I'm, I'm going to go with the four RX 480s. But um, you know, I love my 90, I love my 980 Ti. Not no tie this time, guys. I got your back. But um, yeah, if I if I could do it for me again, I would probably go with those four RX 480s. And um, you know, if you guys feel like buying me some of those and having me test them. I'm available to do that for you anytime. So keep that in mind. <laughs> but uh, anyway, hope you guys are having a phenomenal Friday and hope you guys have a great weekend. I'll see you in the next one. See ya. And that may or may not have been Overwatch at 4K at Maxim.